All right, now it's time for us to finding some terms and uh, figure out how much and when to produce. Now we've said before that in a perfectly competitive market, firms cannot choose their price. They have to just accept the market price. What they can determine is how much they want to produce. So one of the big things we're gonna to do today is figure out how much does a firm want to produce? Before we get there though, we need to define some terms. Here's a heuristic. Ignore sunk costs. A sunk cost is what happens when you go into a movie theater and you realize the movie's terrible. You've already paid $15 to buy that ticket. So you sit around and you bear through the awful movie because you already paid for it. That is called the sunk cost fallacy. In reality, you should ignore the fact that you paid $15 to get into that movie. If you're miserable and you'd rather be doing something else, it doesn't matter whether you paid $0 or $100 to get in. You should do the thing that will make you happiest. Don't fall for the sunk cost fallacy. And our perfectly competitive businesses shouldn't either. Our businesses will try to ignore sunk costs in their decision making and make the optimal decision regardless of previously bad choices. A sunk cost is a cost that cannot be recovered and therefore isn't relevant in our decision making. Sunk costs will not influence how much a firm chooses to produce. All right, more definitions ahead. So sunk costs are expenses that have already been paid. There are other types of expenses in a perfectly competitive market. The first is fixed costs. Fixed costs are costs that do not vary with output. Producing more or less barrels of oil, perhaps, will not affect the fixed cost of renting the land. If it costs us $100 to rent the land, no matter how much oil we pump out of the ground, that's a fixed cost. If I rent 30 acres of land to grow corn, I have to pay $300 per acre, no matter whether I grow 2,000 bushels of corn, zero bushels of corn, or if I grow wheat. A fixed cost is a cost that does not vary with output. And short run choices, such as how much to produce, don't affect fixed costs. However, in the long run, long run choices can affect fixed costs. For instance, next year I could choose not to rent the land and instead put my money into a different business and not grow any corn at all. In the long run, you can change fixed costs, but in the short run, you've already paid for rent. You can't affect it. In the short run, fixed costs are a sunk cost. Our third type of cost is variable costs. Variable costs are costs that do vary with output. If you have a factory producing pieces of candy, if each piece of candy uses 15 cents worth of sugar, that's a variable cost. It's a cost that varies with output. If you produce one piece of candy, then it costs you 15 cents in sugar. If you produce two pieces of candy, it costs you 30 cents, 15 times two. If you produce a thousand pieces of candy, it costs you a thousand times 15 cents. Variable costs increase with increased output and decrease with decreased output. I will not ask you in questions about explicit and implicit costs, but in order to define profit, which you will be asked about, you need to understand these two concepts. 
An explicit cost is 15 cents in variable cost to make a piece of candy. It's the $3 you pay at the pump for a gallon of gas. Explicit costs are costs that require a monetary outlay. But explicit costs aren't the only costs out there. Remember, one thing very important in microeconomics is opportunity cost. Implicit costs, opportunity costs, are costs that don't require an outlay of money. The cost of the next best alternative. What else I could have done with my time. By growing corn, I implicitly am giving up the possibility of growing soybeans. In this course, we will not worry about accounting profits, which are just explicit costs. Rather, we are going to worry about what's called economic profit. Economic profit considers the, use, the best use of a firm's assets by attempting to consider opportunity costs. If it costs you $100 to run a tractor to plant corn or to plant soybeans, the explicit cost is $100. But the implicit cost is what you give up. If you can sell corn for only a dollar a bushel, but you can sell soybeans for $600 a bushel, then by growing corn, you're giving up a huge opportunity to make a lot of money on soybeans. If you have a really valuable oil well under your land, but instead of extracting oil, you use it for ranching, you give up a lot of money. The implicit cost of ranching is all the oil you could be pulling out of the ground. Accounting profit, we won't use in this course. It's total revenue minus explicit costs. It's the amount of dollars you bring in minus the amount of dollars you spent. But economic profit, that's what we care about. Economic profit is total revenue, all the dollars you've brought in, minus the dollars you spent, but also considering opportunity cost. If you earn $500 ranching, but you could have earned $600,000 extracting oil, then you lost a lot of money. Your economic profit, negative $599,500. What is profit? And again, we're talking about economic profit here. Economic profit is total revenue minus total cost, including implicit costs. Let's break this down. Total revenue is price times quantity. The amount of units you sell multiplied by how much money you sold each one for. If you sell more units at the same price, your total revenue increases. If you sell the same number of units at a higher price, your total revenue increases. Total cost, on the other hand, is the cost of producing a given quantity of output. Total cost includes fixed costs and variable costs. As we said before, fixed costs are not affected by the quantity you produce. But variable costs, like revenue, are both affected by quantity produced. Total revenue, price times quantity sold. We're going to represent it this way. Total revenue TR is equal to price P times quantity Q. You may remember from our supply and demand curve 
that our x-axis is labeled Q and our y-axis is labeled P. Total cost, we'll call that TC. That's the cost of producing some level, some quantity of output. This quantity. Both total revenue and total cost are for the same quantity of output.